Hello. In this episode, I wish to talk about um, differentiation related to logarithm, logarithmic functions. Um, some of these, you know, um, the application of logarithm properties is um, you know, not necessary, but it makes things easier. But in some other cases, and it, we have to use logarithm differentiation. Um, so first of all, let's look at some of these uh, important logarithm properties. The logarithm properties, of course, we understand is about product rule, quotient rule, and power rule. Okay, the product rule is for any base. Okay, of course, the base has to be greater than uh, zero, not equals to one. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the basic assumption, which has been you know introduced ever since logarithm was introduced. So when we have two quantities, right, x multiply y, or you can use whatever symbol you want, the logarithm of base b equals to logarithm of base b of x plus logarithm base b of y. And here, of course, x, y must be positive. Okay, we're talking about these properties. Then x must be positive, y, y must be positive, right? So they're all from the domain. And then it is the quotient, quotient rule. Quotient rule, we would have a capital X over capital Y, right? Denominator cannot be zero. And that would make log base B of X minus log base B of Y. Okay. And of course here, X, Y are positive. So these are the, the assumption for all of them. The third case, the third case is logarithm when we have a power form, say we have x raised to the power of, uh, just take another symbol, okay? I'm gonna use heart. Then the power heart can be brought down to the fr in front of the logarithm, okay? And the heart as the power to x can be any real number can be any real number. So these are the three major properties. And of course there are other properties. Other properties, um, you know, when we when we need to use them, then we're gonna, we'll talk about it. Common mistakes, okay? So common mistakes I like to point out, right? The common mistakes, the common mistakes for logarithm such as, you know, when we have um, the product, wait, okay. Uh, let me put it next to the common mistake, wait. So let me make it shorter, okay, wrong. Okay, when x plus one. Okay, another wrong would be, um, this one, right? Subtraction, some people would use it seemingly intuitively, but it's terribly wrong, is when we have the subtraction. We have the subtraction. Okay, so that's wrong, that's wrong, and these are right, and that's right in comparison, right? Um. Another mistake, another mistake which happens on logarithm is that another wrong, let me put it here, okay? Another wrong is this, okay? As far as why they're wrong, I had some other lessons posted 
you know, in first week, so you can look at them on the same topics. We, uh, you know, I provided with counter examples and so on and so forth. So you can study that. The other wrong is this piece. Okay, so these are wrong, wrong, wrong. So these are the common mistakes. So please do not make those common mistakes. So now let's look at our homework. Homework questions, right? Homework questions. And uh, in terms of the derivative of logarithm, we have some formula, and of course you already know. Okay, they're in the flashcards. Okay, and the formula R. So let me see if I can find the flashcards. Um, Let's see. Right here, do we have the fourth part? Yes, hold on. Wait a second. As a matter of fact, I need to. Um, okay. I think I'll just get I just write it write it down because I think this flashcard was not updated. Was not updated. Um so I'm going to just write down the the logarithm, the basic one. Okay, the basic one, the logarithm formula, okay, for log for derivative, right? The derivative which you all know, right? Derivative of log any base, log any base. So here's x is equal to one over x multiply ln B, no, ln B must be in the denominator, sorry. It must be in the denominator, okay? And of course, we also know that if we take a derivative of ln x, right, the base is, the base is E, then it's just one over x because, you know, ln E is one. The third one, which is rather useful, which is rather useful is the derivative of ln absolute value of x. Okay, this has been proved as also one over x. Okay, so these are the major uh, formula related to um, logarithm. The derivative of logarithm. Of course, you know, at times we need to apply chain rule, and then at the time, then we're going to talk about it. Okay, so when we apply these formula, when we apply these formula, for example, in the special cases, when base base e is considered, right, which we encounter very often, is that all of these is going to turn into ln. They're the same logarithm with with the same base, okay? And uh, so this the correct one will be ln, and on this side it will be ln, and that, that will be ln, and that will be ln, okay? So that was just a special case, a special case. And a mistake, of course, can also show up in that form, okay? The mistake could show up in these forms, so be warned. Do not make these mistakes. Do not make these mistakes. Okay. Um, and those are these are the common mistakes. These are the common mistakes. Okay, so we have clarified all of these. Okay. So let's look at the, the homework questions, right? And number two is pretty straightforward. And number three, for example, uh, let, let's do number four. Okay, I would like to do some uh, odd number of questions, odd number of questions. So we have all of these properties at our disposal, right? So we're gonna, we're gonna put them under, 
And we're going to look at some examples. Okay, so the first one we look at is number four. Right? Number four, we have a function f of x equals to ln sine squared of x. Right? So if you look at this as a composite function, then you would differentiate according to chain rule, right? So the derivative with respect to x, right? And that would be the derivative with respect to the, the natural logarithm of sine square x, right? And what we would, would do by chain rule, you would uh, differentiate, right? First, you with respect to ln u, so u is sine square x, right? So this is going to be, uh, so we're going to put this over here, one over dx, right? So we still have everything, but this time with respect to du, and du, and u is sine square x, obviously, right? And then because sine square x is um, sine x being squared, okay? So sine square x is really um, sine x being squared, right? So we would have another layer. We will have another layer. So this is going to be, you know, we're going to make sine x the v. Right, so that's going to be v v squared, and uh, with respect to dx, we have to move dx to further to the next to the next dx. So we're applying chain rule. So v and dv, right, and finally v is sine x. So that's the the application of chain rule. You don't have to show this part, but if you do show this part, and that's what's going on, right? So from this piece, we know V is sine X. And from these two, we know that U is sine X squared, okay? So then as we apply the chain rule, we are getting, we are getting, um, one over u, and u is sine square x, right? We know that, so we're going to replace u by sine square x. Multiply v squared, v squared is two times v, two times v, and v is sine x, right? So v is sine x. So finally, the derivative of sine x is the cosine x. Right, so that's what we, uh, so for, for those of you who have been pretty familiar with a chain rule, you can go here straight, you can go here straight. Okay, and then it is simplification, simplifying. So when we try to simplify this, right, and of course we have sine square here, we have sine x. So we have one sine x, we'll take away one of the sine x in the bottom. So we have a two, and we have one sine x left, and we have a cosine x on the top, right? So in the end, it's really you know, two times cotangent x if you wish to write it as simply as possible, okay? Number five and number six, okay? If you look at number five and number six, right? If you look at these two, okay? There's a difference. There is a difference between these two. Okay, so let me circle these two questions. Let me circle these two questions. Okay, circle these two questions. For the first one, you can see in terms of applying logarithm properties, when we want to differentiate uh, f of x equals to ln one over x, we could actually apply quotient rule, 
Okay, if we apply quotient rule, we're gonna have ln one minus ln x. ln one is zero. So we have a negative ln x. So when we when we do work on the derivative of this piece, okay, when we take a derivative, we're really taking the derivative of a negative ln x. And so negative sign stays, and the derivative of ln x is just a one over x. You can see that. We don't have to use quotient rule. Well, of course, the quotient rule in this case is pretty straightforward, pretty simple. But if you look at number six, that's different. Okay, number six, we have y equals to one over ln x. Differentiate this one, we have to use quotient rule. Okay, we have to use quotient rule. So let's do dy dx. Okay, so that's going to be um, ln x. You can, you can actually also use chain rule if you wish. Okay, you can also use chain rule. So let's try a chain rule. How does a chain rule work, right? So you can assume ln x to be u, right? So derivative of one over u. One over u u, right? And u, of course, is ln x, so dx. You can use chain rule. You can also use a quotient rule, okay? So when we use a chain rule, which we see it as a one from one over u and u is ln x, that makes the, the decomposition. So the derivative one over u with respect to du, that's a negative one over u squared. One over u squared. And u is ln x, right? u is ln x. So we're gonna replace u by ln x here. And the derivative of ln x on the second part, that's gonna be one over x. So in the end, we have negative one over x multiply ln x squared. Can we simplify this further? No. Okay. ln x squared, notice, okay, note, ln x squared, ln x squared is equal to ln x times ln x. It's different from ln of x squared. Okay, that's very different. And the latter is ln x times x, which equals to ln x plus ln x applying product rule, which is equal to two times ln x. So be, be careful about these, okay? And of course you can use a quotient rule and you should get the same result. But I think in this case, using chain rule seem to be much easier. Okay, so let's look at number seven. Number seven, you cannot apply any one of the logarithm property because it's one plus cosine x. So we have to, um, we cannot use any one of these product rule, quotient rule properties. So number seven, okay, so let's look at number seven, which is f of x equals to log base 10, right? Log base 10, which is right common log, okay? So one plus cosine x. So note that we cannot use any one of these properties. We cannot use a product rule, cannot use a quotient rule. We cannot use these properties either because all of these are wrong, right? So what can we do? Well, the derivative of f would be, we're gonna take a derivative, right? We're gonna take a derivative of log, common log, and uh, we're gonna make that something dx, right? 
So we have, we're gonna make one plus cosine X, U, so that's gonna be DU, and the DU, DU is this piece, right? U is one plus the cosine X. And then we go from here, right? So common log U differentiated with respect to U that equals to one over U and the common log, uh, no, ln 10, okay? U ln 10, and U is one plus cosine X, right? And the derivative of one plus cosine x is the derivative of one is zero, the derivative of cosine is a negative sign. Okay, so, so in the end, okay, when we simplify, we will get negative sign x on the top. Okay, that's done, that's done. Number eight, you can use the power rule you can use the power rule. Okay, we can use the power rule. Uh, let me just show it very quickly. Okay, so number eight, if we use the power rule, it would, um, it would make your life a little bit easier, really. Okay, so that's gonna be common log square root of x, right? We're gonna apply the product, uh, the power rule, which is log x raised to the power half, whoops, to the power half. So we bring the power, right? We bring the power outside and the power outside is one half outside. So we have a common log x. And then the derivative of f prime, you know, we have a constant, we keep the constant outside and common log X, so that's gonna be one over X and the ln 10, finished, finished, right? Now, number nine, number nine. Number nine, we have G of X, equals to ln of x multiply e raised to the power of negative 2x. If we don't apply the product rule, then we will be using chain rule. And after chain rule, you know, when we're using chain rule, we're going to make this u, and then we're going to have to use the product rule. But if we use the logarithm property with for the product, right? We will get ln x plus ln e to the power negative two x. Okay, and e to the power negative two x in the logarithm, we can bring the power outside. Okay, so it's minus two x ln e. Ln e is equal to one. So in the end, we have ln x minus two x. You can see how easy it is to differentiate the last one, which is the same as was given. We don't have to use chain rule here, right? So now the derivative of d is equal to the derivative of ln x, which is one over x subtracting two. We finished finished, right? You can see lots of such examples. Um, number 11, you can do it similarly, but ho however, number 12, we cannot. But this question was on one of the quizzes and has been done in the solution. So you can uh, look at that solution. So I'm not gonna cover that over here. Number 13, you would like to use quotient rule to handle it, to handle it, right? Number 14, you have to use a quotient rule. And I will leave that for you. Um, let's look at number 16, okay? 15, there are two layers. And I think I will talk about it in, you, you can see it from the latter example. Okay, so let's look at number 16. Okay, try not to make this too long. Um, 
So we have a y equals to ln absolute value of one plus t minus t to the power of three, I think. Okay, so let me double check. Um, this should be t to the power of three. Yes, t to the power of three. Okay. Oops. Okay, t to the power of three. Okay. In this case, you can see the derivative of ln, you know, law absolute value. So that's what it applies here, right? So this is actually pretty straightforward. Can we apply any one of these product rule quotient rule properties? The answer is no, you can't. Okay. But we can apply chain rule. So dy dx, that would be equal to the derivative of ln absolute value of u. And of course, u is this piece. Okay, I should write dt. Okay. And the derivative, this is du. And then du, u is one plus t minus t to the power of three dt. Right? So now we're getting apply the derivative of that, right? So I'm gonna bring it up right here. Right, we're applying that. There's a consistency there. So this here is gonna be one over u and u is, right? U is what's in the parentheses here. So, whoops, sorry. This is the u, right? That's our u multiply, and then you take a derivative, and that's gonna give us uh, the derivative one is zero, the derivative t is one, one minus three t squared. And that's very much finished, uh, unless you wanna just, you know, just make some adjustment in the end result. Okay, so you can write it down this way, if you wish, and you constant, uh, you cannot reduce it anymore. You cannot reduce it anymore. Okay. Number 18, needless to say, that's a, you can apply chain rule. You can apply chain rule. That, that's fairly straightforward. Number 20, let's look at number 20. Number 20, if we don't use chain rule, if, you, if we don't use a quotient rule product, well, if we don't use a, a quotient rule, it could be very complicated. Okay, so we have ln a square root of a squared minus z squared. And the denominator is a squared plus z squared. And of course we're differentiating with respect to z. But before we do that differentiation, we could apply the, the power rule, right? The power is half. So we can bring the, the one half power outside. So we have ln of the quotient. And if we apply the quotient rule, right? We keep the one half outside and we'll have ln, right? Let me put a bracket we'll have ln a squared minus z squared. We must put a parenthesis here. Okay, we need a pair of parentheses here. If we don't, then you're making a serious mistake. And the next one is ln a squared plus z squared. Can we apply other properties like addition? No, all of these are wrong. We cannot, right? So this is the simplest we can get. Now let's let's find derivative with respect to z. It's prime, right? 
So what are we taking? We're going to keep the half outside. If you want to keep things simple, right? And then, of course, we're going to apply chain rule. We're going to have to apply chain rule, right? So we're going to get uh, 1 over a squared minus z squared. And then differentiate a squared minus z squared. a squared is regarded as a constant because we're differentiating with respect to z and z negative z squared, that derivative is going to be negative to z. And uh, minus similar, right? So uh, that's going to be 1 over a squared plus z squared. And we're differentiating a squared plus z squared and a squared derivative a squared with respect to z is zero and derivative with z squared is 2z, right? You can see it's much easier. You don't have to do the, the square root function, right? And you also don't have to do um, quotient rule. You don't have to use a quotient rule, right? So in the end, okay, so if we simplify this a little bit, right? There's a two here, so this two can be taken out, right? These twos can be taken out and it take away the half, right? And then bracket can be removed. So here we have a negative Z, we put that on top. And over here, we can just put the Z on the top. Okay, it didn't ask us to do more reducing, but if you want, you can. You simply can do more reducing, okay, which find common denominator and reduce that, but I'm gonna leave that for you. So you can see how questions can be simplified, can be simplified. So last one, let's look at number two in this section. 22, okay, 22. We have a y equals to log base two. Okay. And uh, x times log base five of x. Okay. How are we going to differentiate this one? Can we apply? product rule or quotient rule? The answer is yes, actually we can apply product rule. So that will give us log base two of X, right? So we review this as this is a one, this is the capital X and this is the capital Y. So we, we're, we're applying this property on the base two. Okay. Um, plus, right, log base two of, and log base five of log base five. There. Okay, so we apply product rule. Okay, this actually will make it a little bit easier for us to differentiate. So now we're gonna do dy dx. And uh, we're differentiating a sum, right? So what did it do? we're differentiating this piece. And we are also differentiating, so this is x here. And we also differentiating that piece, right? The derivative with respect to dx, right? So we're differentiating a sum. The first part is, you know, the most straightforward and that equals to, one over x ln two plus the second part we have to use chain rule. We have to use the chain rule. Okay. So what we will do is that we have d ln log base two of u du. And what is u? U is du dx, and u obviously is log base five of x, 
And there we go, right? You can go straight there to the next step if you wish. So the first part is done. And the second part, of course, here with respect to you, we're going to get a one over U and Ln two. And U is log base five of X, right? So U is that piece. Right, so these two just multiply. If you sometimes it should to be clear, right? Just to be clear, you you want to kind of just insert parentheses, multiply the derivative of log base five x with respect to x. That's going to be one over x ln five. So are we finished? Yes, we are. We we actually finished. Uh, further reduction would not be necessary, but that's it. That's it. Okay. Um, so this is about these uh, different de uh, derivative, right? In, in these cases, we encounter logarithm and we can use logarithm properties to reduce it before we take a differentiation. And in many cases, it can make our, our life much easier. But in the second set of examples, which is here, right, on these examples, number four, we actually cannot do without, well, most of them, you know, from 43 to 50, you have to use logarithm. But 39 to 42, it's optional. Okay, it's optional. But if we, you look at 42, right? If you do product product rule for 42, it's going to be super difficult. It can be done. It can be done, right? So here we have y equals to root x e to the power of e to the power of x squared minus x, x squared minus x, let me make the funds a bit larger, okay? I'm making the funds larger. And the third factor, the third factor is x plus one to the power of two thirds x plus one to the power of two thirds. So this differentiation, if you use a product rule, then in the process, you have to use a chain rule. It's fairly complicated. Okay, it's fairly complicated. So we're gonna opt to use, oh, so let me make some adjustment. Okay, so let me make some adjustment here. Okay. There, okay, uh, okay, this is better, 42. But if I take a logarithm, ln y equals to ln, right, of the product of the three factors, and I can use the product rule, okay? So I can use the product rule. And, and in this case, we have three, we have three, Right, we have three factors. So we can use, we can apply for three factors. So as a result, after we apply this, so we have ln root square root of x, right? And plus ln uh, e to the power of x squared minus x, and plus ln x plus one to the power of two thirds. And, and then if we apply product rule, if we, I'm sorry, if we apply power rule, right? What is power rule? Power rule is right here, right? So we apply this power rule on the next line, we can make it even more, uh, you know, worthwhile because it becomes simpler. Okay, so it's one over two ln x plus 
And these, this term is just simply x squared minus x plus two thirds that power can be brought in front of ln for x plus one. And then we can take a differentiation on both sides. So now we differentiate on both sides, right? So the derivative with respect to dx on both sides. Derivative with respect to x, boom. And be sure you put a, a bracket if you write it this way. And of course, we can follow the differentiation rule, right? We have two sides. The left-hand side, we're pretty familiar with, right? We use chain rule and we will have a derivative of ln y with respect to dy and then dy dx. And dx is something we're gonna solve for, right? So that's the left-hand side. And the right-hand side, we can take the derivative Right, because we have some differences and take the derivative and take each derivative respectively. Take a derivative respectively, right? The derivative of sum is the sum of derivatives. Right? We have those properties. And now on the left-hand side, we have one over y dy dx. Right, so dy dx can be solved for when we multiply y on both sides. But let's see, let's take, let's take care of the right-hand side. And we have half here. And the derivative of ln x is one over x, right? So one over x. And the derivative of x squared is two x, the derivative of x is minus one. And the derivative of ln, x plus one, or two thirds, sorry, two thirds. That derivative is, we're gonna use the chain rule, right? That's gonna be one over x plus one. The derivative of x plus one is one. So, and by this time we have, you know, taken care of the part that need to be differentiated pretty easily, right? And uh, there any terms to combine, so we can do one over two x here, right? We can just leave it like that. So at this point, dy dx can be solved for if we multiply both sides by y. So I'm gonna put these in the bracket and multiply y in the front, and what is y? Why is this the whole thing? Boom. Um, I think that's all for this lesson. Thank you for watching.